Hi, my name is Julia and I'm a homeschool mom of two. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at just three out of the hundreds of math lessons available for Time for Learning students in grades three through five. The first lesson we will be looking at comes from the Introduction to Multiplication chapter in third grade. It focuses on multiplying by zero and one using arrays and tables. Totally awesome and also fun show! It's more rockin' than a boulder, more rollin' than a sesame seed bun! Oh yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Like most of the lessons, this one begins with a short introduction to the topic. Hey, JT! You seem a little down. What's up? Well, my girlfriend Polilia said I should multiply the amount of time I spend with her by 10. Now, I want to make her happy, but I'm not quite sure what multiply means. It has something to do with toilet paper, right? Um, not exactly. It might help you to think about the word multiple. It means more than one, right? Well, multiplication is sort of like doing something more than once. Have you ever done something multiple times? Great! Knowing the word multiple will help you understand the meaning of multiplication. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so recently there have been a couple of times where JT could have used multiplication to solve a problem. Let's take a look at each and see how multiplication could have helped him out. Click on each example to learn how it relates to multiplication. Be thinking about what all of these examples have in common. So last weekend, 12 of JT's friends came over to hang out. He wanted to give them all a juice box, but he wasn't sure if he had enough for everyone. When he looked in the fridge, he noticed that there were three packages of juice boxes and that each package had four juice boxes in it. To find out how many juice boxes he had in all, he added four three times. Four plus four plus four is 12. What JT didn't realize was that three groups of four is the same as three times four. He could have just multiplied three times four to get 12. Both strategies let JT find that he had 12 juice boxes. Just enough for each of his friends. Let's move forward. Okay, so when do I use multiplication? I think Murray can explain. I appreciate the way this lesson uses both animation and real human instructors to make the subject matter engaging and informative. Time for learning lessons use a variety of styles to keep things fresh and diverse. Anyway. There are four common situations when multiplication will help you find the answer. One common situation is when items come in packages. Remember when JT counted the packages of juice boxes? In each package was the same amount of juice boxes, four. Because there was the same amount in each package, we can use multiplication to find the total number of juice boxes in any given number of packages. Let's move on to another math lesson. This fourth grade lesson will help students explore the idea of a variable by solving for an unknown quantity in an equation. The captain is making his final calculations to the mega boat maker, but he is having trouble with the strange coding in the equation. Be a good mathematician and solve to find the unknown number. An equation must always be balanced so that both sides have the same value. When an equation contains a variable, use a related fact to find the value of the variable. In this addition example, subtraction is used to find the variable. Sometimes addition can be used to find the variable in a subtraction problem. You can see how easy it is for students to replay something if they need to hear it again. Sometimes addition can be used to find the variable in a subtraction problem.
Like many lessons, this activity has questions throughout to make sure your student is understanding as they go. The variable b represents 13. 17 minus 13 equals 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final lesson featured in this video. Fifth grade students will learn about multiplying fractions, not including mixed numbers, and simplifying answers. And now, here with today's top story on multiplying fractions, she's your anchor, but there's no need to thank her, it's Sally Newsworth! Thanks, Troy. That's right. Today, we're going to multiply fractions. For more guidance on this topic, let's beam you to outer space with Commander Christy Powers and her sidekick, Zilch. Multiplying fractions is a lot like multiplying whole numbers. All the same rules of math apply, but you need to be aware of the numerators and the denominators. Why don't we start out by reviewing the basics of multiplication? You know that 2 multiplied by 4 means two groups of 4. 2 multiplied by 4 equals 8. So what happens when we multiply fractions? If we multiply 4 by 1 half, that means we're looking for 4 groups of 1 half. Notice that 4 groups of 1 half equal 2. That's the same as asking what 1 half of 4 is. Let's skip ahead to the recap at the end of the lesson. Solve 9 twelfths multiplied by 2 sixths. Simplify your answer. The correct answer is C. 9 twelfths multiplied by 2 sixths equals 1 fourth. The conclusion summarizes and reinforces the information that was presented in this lesson. This lesson was all about multiplying fractions. To multiply fractions, you multiplied the numerators, and then you multiplied the denominators. The last step was to make sure you simplified the answer, or wrote the answer in lowest terms. Upon completion of a lesson, there is often a quiz available to the student. These are optional and may or may not be utilized according to your teaching style. This concludes the 3rd to 5th grade math demonstration. Please choose another subject below, or if you'd like to learn more about how Time for Learning works, take a look at the tour video. Goodbye.